Hello, I quickly wanted to review quiz one. Most of you did very well with quiz one. A few of you had some challenges on a couple questions. So I'll go through the entire quiz here. The order of the questions may not be the same as your quiz because the quizzes are set to randomize the questions. So nevertheless, the first question here is select all of the features of single subject design research. We talked about a few of them in the introductory lecture. So if you put something to the effect of study of the individual, subject serves as his or her own control, repeated measurement of the dependent variable, um, systematic manipulation of independent variables, I, I gave you credit for that question. Question two. The dimensions of applied behavior analysis outlined by Bear, Wolf, and Risley in 1968 include applied, behavioral, analytic, and of course you had to add in technological, conceptually systematic, effective, and generality. Again, those came from uh, the introductory lecture. Question three, blank is achieved when a predictable change in a dependent variable can be reliably produced by systematic manipulation of the independent variable? Uh, the answer here is experimental control. So again, recall experimental control is an important concept in single subject design because what we're looking for is control over the dependent variable by manipulation of the independent variable. So it's sort of another way of saying a causal relationship between variables. <clears throat> Question four, blank measures the number of times a behavior occurred. Here we're talking about count, right? Simply observing um, perhaps a client during a certain period of time and counting the number of behaviors that occurred. So if it were head banging, we're counting one, two, three, and so forth. So that's a very basic unit of measurement. Okay, these were some of the questions that, that tripped a few of you up. So question five, your high school baseball coach is working with you on becoming a better hitter. He decides to keep track of how many good swings you make during a game. So this is sort of our target behavior, good swings. He defines a good swing as a swing that results in you getting on base. This is an example of what kind of definition. So this is talking about operational definitions of target behaviors. And as mentioned, the target behavior is good swing. And he's defined, the coach in this instance, is defining it as getting on base. So that is an outcome measure or, or the outcome of, of a target. So it's a functional operational definition or, or a functional um, definition for a target behavior. <clears throat> Excuse me, because we're specifying what the outcome of the behavior is. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, the next one, you want to determine the amount of time that elapses between the delivery of an instruction and when a student initiates the instructed task. The best method of measurement is, the answer here is latency. Latency measure measures the time from stimulus onset. In this case, that stimulus is the instruction or the delivery of instruction. So the time between the stimulus onset and when the behavior occurs. So that is when the student initiates a task. <clears throat> and we could capture that measure via a stopwatch, for example, just the, the number of seconds. But we're gonna refer to that as a latency measure. It's not a duration. Duration is a measure of time from the behavior onset to when the behavior ends. So for example, if we were measuring in-seat behavior, we could start a timer when the student is in his or her seat. When they get out, we stop the timer. That is duration measure. Question seven, you're working with a young child with autism on teaching how to request a glass of water. You define the child's requesting water behavior as when the child says water, please. So in this example, it's not the outcome of the behavior that the, the function of the behavior that we're capturing via the definition it's a topography what it actually looks like or in this case what it sounds like so when the child says water please it meets the definition for the target behavior of 
requesting a glass of water. Okay, uh, another measurement question. To calculate a blank, it is the count divided by the observation time. So in the chapter, as well as my lecture, it defined uh, count as simply counting the number of behaviors occurred that occurred in an observation, but a frequency is sort of a calculation measure where we're going to divide the count by the total duration of the observation. <clears throat> okay, so for example, if we observe 10 responses over the course of 10 minutes, you simply would divide by 10 by 10, and you would get a frequency, in that case, per minute. The use of whole interval recording is most likely to cause the investigator to, a uh, couple options here, underestimate the occurrence of the target behavior was the answer. Um, so again, that came out of the, the lecture as well as in the textbook, the section on the measures such as whole interval recording, partial interval recording, and momentary time sampling. These are all sort of time sampling methods for collecting data, ones we might use when there are multiple demands on, on um, data collectors. <clears throat> so in that case, in whole interval recording, we only score the response if it occurs during an entire interval. So if we were measuring, again, out of seat behavior, according to a whole interval recording system, and each interval was, let's say, 10 seconds in duration, and these are sequenced interval one, two, three, four, and five, uh, we would only score out a seat behavior if it occurred during the entire interval. If the student was out of seat uh, for five seconds but got back in seat, then that would not be scored. <clears throat> so it's underestimating the amount of behavior that occurs. Partial interval recording overestimates the amount of behavior that occurs. So these are common sort of measurement errors uh, that, that we accept when using that recording system because it's sort of an estimation. It's a sample of what happened. Okay, uh, the time between two or more responses is known as the inter-response time. Right, so that is if we're observing behavior and it occurs once <clears throat> and then it occurs a little bit later in our observation, the time between two those two behaviors is the inner response time. We typically will average the inner response time within observations. So if, um, if we see multiple behaviors occur, we're going to look at all the individual inner response times and average them out, and that'll give us an average IRT, which can be useful in, in designing differential reinforcement schedules. Question 11, Lauren's parents are interested in decreasing her hair pulling behavior. To measure this, they record whether Lauren engaged in hair pulling for the entire 10 second uh, period of each observation. So this is an example of whole interval recording, right? Because they're only going to measure it if it occurred during the entire interval. And again, just to, to reiterate, if you're unclear on that, I, I encourage you to go back to look through the lecture. When we're using momentary time sampling or partial or whole interval recording, we have an observational period. Let's just say it's 10 minutes in duration that we are going to observe, we take that 10 minutes and divide it into equal length intervals. In this case, uh, they're saying 10 second intervals, uh, but it could be anything, <clears throat> five second, um, one minute, and so forth. Okay, next question. Katie wants to decrease her behavior of swearing. She arranges a contingency in which she will pay $10 to her parents every time she swears. In this example, what is the unit of analysis, right? So this is again, getting in a target behavior. So if she wants to decrease her behavior of swearing, that is a unit of analysis, right? The swearing behavior, not how much money her parents gave her, not the rate of swearing. So it didn't say what measurement was being used or not how many times Katie swears, right? That is the, that these would be the measure, right? This is simply just what is the behavior? What is the unit of analysis? <clears throat> Question 13, Jessalyn is a five-year-old little girl who is just learning to read. She's working with her teacher on letter 
sound correspondences, blending sounds, sounding out words, and saying them at a normal pace. In this example, what is the response class? Well, you, you need to obviously know response class is simply another name for a target behavior that uh, target behaviors that serve the same outcome. So the response class here is a reading behavior because all of these responses make up reading behavior. Okay, so again, it's not the measure here or just one aspect of what it means to read or the number of trials. Again, that's sort of another measure. It is the response class. So we're gonna say reading behavior in this case includes all of these different topographies. <clears throat> Question 14, generally the use of partial interval recording is likely to cause the investigator to, well, if you got um, <clears throat> the last question on this whole interval recording, you probably got this one, overestimate the occurrence of the target behavior. All right, so again, here, we're gonna record the behavior if it occurs any time during the interval. Well, once again, if we're looking at something like out of seat behavior, even if it occurs for two seconds out of a 10 second interval, it gets recorded as having occurred. So it's sort of uh, capturing more behavior than actually uh, occurred if we use this method of, of recording. <clears throat> Question 15, Clayton's watch beeped every five minutes and he recorded whether he had sworn at any time during the five minutes. This is an example of partial interval recording, right? So it's not whether it occurred during the entire interval or at the end of the interval, it is if it occurred at any time during the interval. Question 16, Billy and his older brother Alex got, get into an argument over who's going to get to play the video game next. Alex becomes angry, Billy starts yelling and punching, leaving bruises on Billy's arm. This is an example, in this example, what is the response product? So if we wanted to use <clears throat> response product to measure these sort of altercations between um, Billy and his brother, the bruises might be, the, are, are the response product. Okay, a track coach records how long in seconds it takes a sprinter to run 100 meters. In this example, what is the unit of measurement? Okay, so the unit of measurement is the number of seconds, right? So unit of analysis would be the running. Um, the unit of measurement here is a number of seconds. <clears throat> okay, that is it. I hope that clarifies any questions you might have regarding that material. If you still have questions, please go back and read the text, review the lectures, um, and then if you still have questions, feel free to reach out.